What is up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, and on this channel I'll talk about cybersecurity. Today's video is going to be a little different from what I usually do where I talk about cybersecurity stuff. I'm going to be talking about cybersecurity stuff in this video, um, but I'm going to be talking about it from a different perspective. And this video is going to be called Deep Work, but for cybersecurity. So one of my goals this year was to read more books. Um, one of the first books I wanted to read, um, actually read again, was my Bible. So last year I finished my Bible and this year my goal was to finish my Bible again. I haven't had much progress with that. I mean, I've gotten, you know, I've gotten far, but not as far as I did last year. Um, but I also set out to read other books. So I started reading on um, Think and Grow Rich, but I never finished that book. Um, I would definitely work on finishing it probably next year. Uh, but one book that really caught my attention this year was this book called Deep Work. Uh, by Cal Newport and uh, it, it says rules for focused success in a distracted world so essentially rules to live a focused life in a distracted world and this book caught my attention I have been hearing about I had been hearing about it from different people um, and I'd watched like some YouTube videos that I um, covered like the book and I was like this is really interesting and this is something I was really interested in because um, I like to really be focused on what I'm doing and I value focus a lot. So I feel like this book would be a great addition to um, my desire for focus. Uh, let's quickly read what this says at the back. So one of the most valuable skills in our economy is becoming increasingly rare. Deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on the cognitively demanding task. Coined by the author of his popular book, Study Hacks, deep work will make you better at what you do let you achieve more in less time and provide the sense of true fulfillment that comes from the mastery of a skill. In short, deep work is, a like, is like a superpower in our increasingly competitive economy. All right, so um, this book is definitely a really good read. I recently just finished this book and this video is gonna be a quick um, analysis of some things that I've learned from this book and I've started applying in my day-to-day -day activities. So, from the beginning, um, the writer of this book, Cal Newport, and you're gonna see me look uh, down a lot because I'm gonna be reading from like my sticky notes and everything. But um, from the beginning, the, the writer of this book, Cal Newport, he starts by categorizing people, and the main category of people in this in this book are called knowledge workers, and uh, knowledge workers are essentially people that are super valuable to the com uh, to the economy. And um, some of the people he, he mentions as knowledge workers are like uh, professors, uh, computer programmers. And he never mentioned anything about cybersecurity, but I think cybersecurity professionals are knowledge workers. And um, the way he describes knowledge workers um, um, makes me um, more aligned to think that cybersecurity professionals can be categorized as knowledge workers. So this book is titled Deep Work. So what exactly is deep work according to the author? So deep work is, or deep work uh, professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push it, push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. And we're gonna cover that last part, hard to replicate, because that's a really, really key thing about deep work. Now, if there's deep work, then there's supposed to be a, there's supposed to be something on the other spectrum of deep work, right? And right now, all of this might just sound, you know, pointless or like not making any sense, but this is a preface for what is to come in the second in the next part of my analysis of this book. So definitely try to understand what is going on here. So let's look at what shallow work is. So shallow work is non-cognitively non demanding logistical style tasks often performed while distracted. And I'm very sure a lot of us can, we can relate with what shallow work, shallow work is because that's a lot of what we do daily. If we are truly honest with ourselves, we do a lot of shallow, shallow work. We might not admit it, but a lot of what we do is shallow work. So these efforts tend to not create much new value in the world and are easy to replicate. Now, remember the last part of deep work. So deep work is hard to replicate. Shallow work is easy to replicate, right? So moving forward, the author goes forward to continue to talk more about deep work and he says deep work is valuable. Deep work is valuable in the sense that it has benefits he, it provides for the individual who does deep work, right? So deep work is valuable in the sense that um, you, it can help you learn hard things quickly. Now, before we go into that point, deep work is categorized um, in, or it's calculated in with two parameters. So 
think of a square or a, re or a rectangle when you want to calculate the area of a square rectangle you look at the length and the breadth right so length times breadth or length length times width um, is the area of the rectangle right same thing with deep work but in this case we have length and length is the amount of time you spend right the amount of time you spend doing deep work right and this doesn't have to be like an outrageous amount of time, like 10 hours or 12 hours or eight hours. It could be three hours, it could be four hours, it could be two hours, right? And uh, statistically, like, um, uh, I, th I believe based on what, it, what is mentioned in the book, I, th I think the, 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 the maximum amount of time you can actually spend doing deep work um, without getting exhausted or burnt out is four hours. So let's look at a maximum of four hours or an average of four hours. And we have uh, for that length, right? And then on the other side, we have depth. And this depth is the intensity of your focus during your deep work. So the depth of your focus in your, in your deep work. So in order for you to achieve deep work, you have to have length, right? Which is a quality amount of time spent doing deep work and depth. That means like an intense amount of focus while doing your deep work. So that's how deep work is calculated according to the author of this book. And some key points um, to point out here based on some things the author says. Uh, deep work helps you learn hard things quickly because if you're spending uh, quality time and if you're spending quality quality time and with enough depth learning a hard concept you might think it's it, you might think it's taking you longer uh, because you might be might not be grasping it at first but the fact that you have a lot of depth in your study as well as um, quality time which is your length then you would be able to learn a hard thing relatively faster than someone who is doing it on a shallow level so for example if you're studying and you have a lot of distractions and you have like you're looking at your emails you're texting you're like you have snapchat open you have instagram you have twitter all that place your attention is divided and so you're def you're if you're essentially doing shallow work meaning it's gonna definitely it's gonna definitely take you a longer amount of time to learn something that would have naturally taken you less time if you're specifically focused on that task and uh, for that period of time as well as had in-depth focus deep focus at that period of time during uh, your study or during your deep work the author goes forward to talk about the fact that deep work is meaningful and he talks about the fact that extreme depth helps you leave the distracted many and join the focused few so for me one of my goals now or one of my new goals is to leave the distracted many and to join the focused few um, moving forward as well, um, just quickly jumping over some key points that I really took out of this book. Uh, the, the, the author has a whole chapter uh, uh, dedicated to embracing boredom. And this chapter essentially covers the fact that our mind craves to always be doing something essentially. So like if we have like a period of time where we are waiting, a, waiting in a line for maybe our food or something, we quickly want to grab our phone. So our mind stays in a constant mode of being distracted by something, right? Where if we are, you know, waiting for something to load, we immediately grab our phone, scroll through social media, get a little bit of satisfaction, and then get back to our task, right? So the fact that our mind stays in a constant mode of distraction, um, this part of embracing boredom covers how to kind of mitigate the fact that you're always distracted and embrace boredom, right? And, and stop allowing your mind to be overstimulated by distractions all the time. And the next thing the author talks about is he dedicates a whole chapter. Actually, uh, it called it a rule. So rule one is work deeply. Rule two is um, embrace boredom. And rule three is quit social media. And this is where like, I really want uh, uh, to, 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 to dwell on more. And I'm doing a video specifically on why I follow this rule. I didn't necessarily follow this rule, but this this rule had an um, effect on one of my recent decisions to quit social media. So this part of quitting social media essentially is as a knowledge worker you might feel compelled uh to want to have a social media account like twitter instagram you know um and he compared this to like um to like writers who uh uh who have social media some who don't have social media and about the fact that um a lot of people a lot of a lot of writers like him because he's a writer they wrote the book um like him some of them do not have social media and that kind of helps them focus more on their writing rather than trying to focus on like marketing, uh, you know, waking up every morning to tweet something um, or to reply messages or retweet or 
like Instagram pictures or whatever. The absence of social media helps them focus more on their knowledge work, which is writing. And remember, we are talking about knowledge workers here. So um, this um, chapter goes in depth about quitting social media. And um, like I said, I'm gonna be making a video specifically about why I quit social media and how this chapter also had its own effects on that. Um, but essentially, social media is, um, if you really look at the cost um, benefit analysis as a knowledge worker, um, social media is best quit like it's best to quit social media uh typically um and, and 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 you know you might have your own reservations about it you know based off your situation but personally um the only social media i have right now is my linkedin um i don't count youtube, YouTube as social media because you can basically curate your feed um and it's not like um you know constantly like connecting with people or anything it's like watching videos and stuff so um, yeah, that's it about social media. I guess I will stop my analysis of the book at this point. I feel like I rambled a lot uh, because I wasn't really organized with my thoughts um, on this book because there was just so much I learned from this book and if I were to like start listening to all of it and just going in, in depth with it, into all of it, it would be a really, really long video. Uh, but to sum it all up, I think this book is a really valuable book um, for cybersecurity professionals um, and that was the reason why I did this video because I wanted to bring a different perspective to, the, to this book um, that's why I said deep work, but for cybersecurity and really relating all of this to cybersecurity, right? We've looked at all of these things, relating all of this to cybersecurity. Um, remember the, the author said something about the fact that, um, deep work is rare, right? So the ability to spend quality time and to have depth in your focus when you're studying for certifications or learning a new skill or learning a new tool is rare. Not everyone has that ability, right? Not everyone has the ability to spend time learning hard things. But if you have the capability and you have the willingness to do deep work in your cybersecurity and endeavors, it definitely has its rewards um, in, in terms of like your success and your growth as a cybersecurity professional or in general as a knowledge worker, because this can apply to like um, everyone else who is categorized as a knowledge worker. So once again, I highly recommend this book. Um, I think it's a really great read. I feel like I'm going to read this book again. Uh, because I feel like when you read books more than more than once, it you know it it it, it definitely brings your perspective to to just different things that uh, you might have you might not have seen in the first time when you've read it. Um, and I actually used Audible while I was reading this book, so I like reading the book and using Audible at the same time. It just helps me stay focused while I'm reading the book. And sometimes like, I can't I I don't have the book with me, so like if I'm at the gym, I can easily just like plug my headphones in and be uh, listening to the book while I'm like doing cardio or something. So. Um, just to run it all up, uh, once again, this book is a really, really great book. Highly recommend it for cybersecurity professionals, knowledge workers, anyone who wants to live a deep and focused life and to leave the distracted, uh, the distracted many for the focused few. And I have chosen to live a deep life, to live a focused life because it's the best life there is. And um, that will be the end of this video. I look forward to reading more books. Uh, I think the next book I'll be reading is going to be Atomic Habits. That's another one that I've been hearing a lot about. And I've, uh, I think it's going to be a, another book to incorporate um, into my reading. Um, like I said, I, I really want to start reading more books um, now. I know I'm no longer on social media, so I might as well spend the time doing um, uh, valuable things and adding value to myself. I also be reading cybersecurity books um, and kind of combining it with self-help books. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's all for this video. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble all through. But yeah, uh, if you like this video, please be sure to smash the like button and be sure to subscribe. Um, and be sure to share this video with anyone who you think it will provide value to. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you'd like me to do like more kind of like review videos about like books that I've read, please let me know and um, I will be happy to do uh, those reviews. Once again, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.